morning, GSEC. Can we please get up on our feet so we can get ready? Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord? Can you turn to your neighbor and tell them, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And I want to begin by just speaking the name of Jesus over our lives. Can we do that this morning? Can we speak his blessings, his health, and the joy of the Lord? And that the joy of the Lord overflow our hearts, this place, and our homes. Can somebody say amen? Come on, let's praise. Put your hands. Oh 
on, don't stop singing. Don't stop praising the Lord. Come on. Sing to the Lord. If the cross won your freedom, sing to the Lord. If you know that He saves, tell all the earth that His arms are wide open. Salvation is in His name. Thank you, Jesus. Let the lost be found. Let the blind eyes see. Let the music play. Let the people see. And now my life is yours 
And I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Worthy is your name. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. And now my shame is gone. I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forever.
If the highest place I reach is at your feet, then I've done it all. If the best thing that I've seen is your glory, then I've seen it all. Your love has changed my life, forever satisfied. God, you are my everything. If the highest place I reach is at your feet, Thank you for who you are, God. 
God, we thank you of the truth, God, that we can be satisfied in your love, God. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for this Christmas season where we're reminded, God, of you sending your son so that you could make a way for us, God, to be here and to be in your presence, God, to have communion with you, God. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for... God, speaking to our hearts, God, we thank you that you're moving and you're active right now in this place, Jesus. God, we thank you that you're going after us, God, and in return, God, we run after you wholeheartedly, Jesus. We thank you and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and we say amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some more praise this morning. Amen. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. If you're here in person, you can go ahead and take your seat. If you're connecting online, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. My name is George Vasquez, and I'm one of the pastors here at GSCC. At this point in our service, we want to continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. But today, I'd like to ask you a question. Have you asked God about your giving lately? I know this is a question we don't often think to ask. We ask God about a lot of things, but not giving. We ask God for strength when we're feeling weak. We ask Him for wisdom when we have to make difficult decisions. We ask Him for healing and comfort for those who are sick and hurting. We often ask God to grow us and make us more like Christ in every way. But do we think to ask God about our generosity? We should because giving is one way that God grows us to be more like himself. So, when was the last time that we honestly thought about our personal generosity? Is our generosity consistent with what God invites us to in his word? Are we currently responding to how God wants to challenge us and grow our faith? Or is our generosity in a set it and forget it mode? Many of us chose a level of giving years ago and that's okay and that's where we've been since then we rarely think of it because we're comfortable his desire is that it would be a living and active part of our faith so to bring our tithes and offerings you can text the word gscc to 833-246-0444 or you could download and give through the gscc connect app or you can give online at gsccconnect.com. You can also give in person by placing your tithes and offerings in the offering bags that are going to be passed down the aisles in just a few moments, or by placing them in the boxes located at each of the sanctuary exits. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you that you continue, Lord, to call us to be more like you, Lord. And now, as we give, may you take what we give, Lord, our tithes and offerings. May you take it and continue to multiply it, Lord, to reach one more for you, Jesus. One more family, one more teenager, one more marriage, one more neighbor, one more, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Welcome all of our guests this morning. If this is your first time joining us, let us know by scanning the QR code located behind every seat. If you're joining us online, please text CONNECT to 956-395-1551. You'll be redirected to fill out our online CONNECT card. We would love to get to know you and stay connected with you. You can sign up to lead a CONNECT group next semester. The deadline to sign up to lead a CONNECT group is December 15th. If you're interested in leading a group, contact our church offices at 956-350-8282. Partner with us this Christmas season as we bless children from Benavides Elementary with Christmas gifts. Today is the last day to stop by the tree in the lobby to choose a gift tag. All gifts must be turned in next Sunday, December 15th, and can be left in the designated Operation Blessing area in the lobby.
To make a monetary donation for the Christmas outreach, place your gift in an envelope marked Operation Blessing or give to Operation Blessing at gsccconnect.com. Looking for some family fun this holiday season? Gather the entire family and invite your friends and neighbors to Jingle Jam happening this Wednesday, December 11th at 6.30 p.m. Join us for this free Christmas experience for the entire family as we remember God's greatest gift to us all. Join in the Christmas spirit and wear your best or worst Christmas sweater outfit next Sunday, December 15th in all three services. Don't forget to stop by the photo area in the main entry to get a picture. We are so excited to announce our Christmas Eve services happening on Tuesday, December 24th. Join us for our English service at 4 p.m. and our Spanish service at 6 p.m. Invite your friends, family, and neighbors to experience the promise of Christmas and celebrate the significant moments of Christmas. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at GSCC. Well, good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Community Church. It's so great to see all of you here in person. And thank you, those of you who are joining us online. We're so thankful for the opportunity to worship together each and every single week. So God bless you. What a great weekend it has been. How many of you were able to attend the ladies' Christmas party this past week? Amen. Did y'all have a great time? Amen. I heard it was wonderful. I heard everybody had an incredible time. So glad that the ladies had such a wonderful time this week. And also, and it feels a little bit like Christmas outside. It's chilly. I have a friend visiting from Alabama, and we, we spent some time outdoors this week, and I was freezing. And I said, man, do, do, did you, do, do you need a jacket? He said, no, I got a long sleeve shirt on. I'm okay. Man, it is cold. It's a different kind of cold. <laughs> but I'm so thankful, so grateful. I'm grateful for a breeze. So right now, this feels awesome. I'm so thankful for this weather. And I'm thankful for this season for more than just the weather, but I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for, for who he is, and I'm thankful that we get to continue to, to learn more about who he is, who his word says he is, as we continue in this series that we have been in, The Promise of Christmas. This year, as we look into the promise of Christmas, we've taken the time to all this month to celebrate Advent. Advent on the calendar is just the first four weeks leading up to Christmas. And that word Advent, all that means is arrival. So we're taking this time this month of December to celebrate the birth or the arrival of our Savior, of Jesus. We're also taking time to, to, to look forward to and to celebrate the fact that one day he will return. Amen? As we began to, to celebrate and, and discuss Advent last week, we started off the celebration by focusing on hope. In the middle of all of the, the hopelessness, in the middle of all of, of doubt or of fear or of anxiety, of, of whatever there may be, there is hope, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world. Amen? We looked in the book of Isaiah at all the prophecies about Jesus and the hope that he brought to the Israelites, the hope that he brings to us today. And if you missed that last week, by the way, I just want to encourage you, take some time, go back and, and, and find it on the GSCC Connect uh, app or on our website. You can find the, the YouTube channel as well. Go back and listen to that message or watch that message. I'm praying and believing that it'll be a blessing to you if you take the time to invest in, in going back and listening to that. And so today, though, we're going to shift our focus from the hope that Jesus brought to the love of Jesus and the love of God as we continue to celebrate Advent. Amen? We're going to begin this morning in the book of John, if you have your Bibles with you. But before we open up to the book of John, I want to just take a moment this morning to pray. So, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your mercy, for your kindness. Lord. Thank you for your presence that is here in this place right now, Lord. Thank you for your word, and I pray that as we, we, we dig into your word, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what it is that you would say to us today, that your word would, would stir something in us, oh God would do a work in us so that then you could work with us and through us oh god we love you we praise you we worship you we give you all honor and all glory as we read your word this day in jesus name we pray amen in john we're going to begin in a passage of scripture that i'm sure many of us are 
familiar with, or at least you've heard this reference, but I want us to really take our time as we look at this this morning. In John chapter three, verse 16 and 17, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. I, I know so many of us have, have heard that passage of scripture. It's on a refrigerator magnets and t-shirts and bumper stickers and, and tattoos and all sorts of other things. And it can be so easy to take for granted the power behind these words. The life-giving, life-saving power of what God did. It starts out by saying that God so loved that he gave. If you don't hear anything else that I say today, if, if every other word that I says goes in one ear and out the other, my heart, my prayer would be that you would hear these words, that you would receive them, that you would believe them, that God so loved the world, that God so loves the world. That's you and that's me, that God loves us so much that he gave. That word so, we use it a little bit differently uh, today than, than how we read it in this translation of, of scripture. We say things like, oh, this movie is so good, right? Or, or, or like the story I shared a, 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 a couple of weeks or a week back where I said that, that girl walked into my apartment and she smelled dinner. She said, oh, that smells so gross. Or this is so wonderful, or this is so awful, or, and we use that word so to describe the degree to which we appreciate or we don't appreciate something. We use the word so to describe the degree to which we appreciate or we don't appreciate something. But in this instance in scripture, that word so was indicating that there was such a strong love that was there that it led to action. There was, a, there was a love that led to, to a, a desire to do something. How many of you know what a Klondike bar is? Those chocolate-covered ice cream bars? You remember those commercials? I don't even know if they still do those commercials anymore. What would you do for a Klondike bar? And I saw this commercial, and it was, it was an older commercial, and they were interviewing people live on the streets. What would you do for a Klondike bar? This is gonna be on national television. And they were asking people, would you, would you walk around and act like a chicken for a Klondike bar? This is an ice cream bar. I can go to Walmart right now and for about four or five dollars, I can get six of them. But people in these commercials for an ice cream bar, something that was gonna air on national television, become part of a national ad campaign, would you, would you walk around and act like a chicken for a, a 25 cent ice cream bar? And you would not believe how many people, I have to do what for a what? Yeah, I'll do that. So these people on this commercial, and I know I just did that right now but I did it for Jesus. I didn't do it for an ice cream bar. If one person gets saved and I did that, it was worth it. Right, but I wouldn't do that for an ice cream bar. Really? Man, I wanted that ice cream bar so bad. <laughs> right, well, this says that God so loved, that he loves us so much that even though we were lost, stuck in sin. <clears throat> Separated from him. That he loved us so much, he was willing to do something about it. It says that he loved us so much that he gave his son. He loved us so much that he gave his son to die on the cross to pay the price 
for the penalty for our sins. Another way, a translation that the, of this, this verse says, in this way, God loved the world. God demonstrated his love for us when he gave Jesus to die on the cross. That hope was not free. Jesus is the hope of the world. This hope came at a great price, though. Christmas is a season where we celebrate the birth of Jesus, but we cannot in this season forget that Jesus was born to die. He died to pay the penalty of our sins so that we could be made right with God. That's love. For God so loved that he gave. So I want to take some time this morning to talk about Jesus and, and the, the power and the significance of what he's done for us. John 15 Verse 13 says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus did for us. He laid his life down for us. And that language, by the way, is so important to me, that he laid his life down. That means he gave it up. Nobody took it from him. Nobody stole his life from him. Nobody made him. He chose to do that. He laid his life down. Jesus, the Son, made a willing decision to become a part of God the Father's plan for redemption. He chose to do that. John 10, 18, as Jesus was talking about being the, the good shepherd, he said this, no one uh, of his life, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. He laid his life down. He chose to do that. Romans 5 has even more to say about how amazing it is what Jesus has done for us. It says in verse 6 of Romans 5, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more... Now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. I know that's a, a, a lot of scripture, but John 15 says, starting out, that it, greater love has no one than laying down their life for their friend. But what Jesus did was so much more than that. He didn't just lay his life down for his friends. It says that while we were still weak and ungodly, while we were living and walking in sin, he did what most people would be unwilling to do, even for a godly person, even for, I mean, even for a, a, a good person and would definitely not do for an enemy. He loved us so much that even while we were enemies of God, that he was willing to die so that we could be saved and reconciled and be in right relationship with God. You may be here today or you may be watching online and say, well, I've, I've never been God's enemy. I've never been an enemy of God. When, when have I been an enemy of God? But Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. In other words, it, there's no middle ground. You're either walking with God or you're not. You're either following Jesus or you're not. You're either walking with God or you're walking in opposition to God. So yes, when we are apart from God, when we are walking, we are opposing God. Another way of saying that, we are enemies of God. But here's the thing, I'm so thankful that Jesus doesn't treat his enemies the same way that, that you or I often would, would, would want to do, right? Can we be honest? We don't like somebody. We don't even want to open the door for them. You see somebody coming, you're going to, you, you're like, oh, they're going to come. Oh, let me shut the door real quick. 
Let me hide from them. Jesus wasn't plotting or planning revenge. He's, he wasn't planning to destroy us while we were his enemies. He wasn't plotting our downfall or our demise. Jesus loved us so much that even when we were enemies, he was working this plan of redemption, of healing, of restoration, of, of reconciliation so that all might be saved. That's love. That even while we were enemies, he was pursuing us. By the way, love is not just something that God does. It's who God is. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says, So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. So the Bible, this verse, this passage of scripture says that not only does God love, the act of love, God is love. Now, if you've been here for any number of weeks, you probably have figured out I'm a, I'm a word nerd. I love words. I love looking up the original language. I love looking up the, 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 the Strong's number and then this and that and then really digging in. And, uh, so you know what the original translation of the word is from this scripture? Do you know what it means? It means the same thing it means in English. It means is. It means to be. He is love. Whoever abides in that love abides in God, and God abides in them. And abide is not one of those words that we use a whole lot. Right? It's not something we use in our day-to-day -day language, but that word abide in the Webster's Dictionary means to remain stable or fixed in a state. In other words, to dwell. So those who dwell in love, they dwell in God, and God dwells in them. That word abide, by the way, we're going to do a whole series in January, so make sure that, that you start the year strong. Make it a, a priority this year to, to, to be in church, to start the year out in church. We would love to see you here, and we're going to dig more into this word abide, so make plans to be here. You're not going to want to miss it. God is love, and the scripture tells us to dwell in his love. But in order to dwell in his love, we need to look at how the Bible defines love. We need to look at how God, in his word, what he says love is. And we find that, we find God's definition of love in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7 says this, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what love is. There's so many twisted and ungodly definitions of, of the word love that are out there. But as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ, we've got to derive our definition of what love is from the standard that God has set in his word. What does God say that love is? And this is what God's word says that love is. It's not a, a feeling or an emotion that's driven by physical desires. That's not love. I'm going to say that again. It's not a feeling or an emotion driven by physical desires. Love is a choice. It's a choice to be patient and kind. How many of you love your kids? How many of you know it, it, it takes a choice, a decision to be patient and kind? How many of you wives love your husbands? How many of you know it, it, it takes a choice sometimes to be patient and kind? I know me. I know it takes a choice, a decision to be patient, to be kind. It's a decision, it's a choice not to be irritable or resentful. It's a choice to 
when we see somebody to not celebrate or rejoice in their downfall and their demise to pray for them it's a choice to be unselfish it's a choice to walk with peace love is a choice to do the right things and to do them with endurance Have you ever told somebody, you better be glad I love you? Oh, so you have. You have said that before. You better be glad I love you. And then it's like, or what? If we're honest and we finish that sentence, you better be glad I love you or I would treat you in a way that's contrary to what the word of God says. Uh Uh-oh. You know, and some people really like to test that though. I'm so glad that God loves me. I'm so glad that God loves you. I look at my life, I look at this season, I look at my family, I look at everything that God is doing in the city, in this region, and I say, Lord, thank you that you're patient with me. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness towards me. Thank you, Lord, that you don't get irritated with me. I'm so glad you don't resent me. Lord, thank you for not not celebrating and rejoicing when I fall short of your glory, when I fall short of your standard. Thank you for bearing with me, Lord. Thank you for enduring. I'm so thankful for the love of God. So this season, as we talk about hope and as we talk about love today, how do we respond to his love? How do we respond to how he has loved us? John 15, going to verse 12, says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Then he goes to verse 13, which we've already read today. It says, greater love is no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. Verse 14 says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. There's that word again. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. 1 John 4, verses 7 through 12 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. First John, again in, in chapter four, but moving on to verses 19 and 20, it says, we love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. One more verse here. Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40 says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. They're they're speaking to Jesus here. They said, Teacher... Which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This 
is the great and first commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and prophets. So how do we respond to the love of God? How do we respond to, to who he is and all that he's done for us? Well, first of all, we make a decision to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. We, we, we respond to who he is and what he's done by saying, Lord, I, I choose you. I choose to follow you. I choose to love you. I choose to, to give my whole life to you. Everything that I am, all that I have, I bring to you, God. And I love you. The second is this. We love one another. This is not just a suggestion, by the way. I don't know if you saw it in these scriptures that I read several times. In John 15, 12, it says, this is my commandment. And then verse 17 says, these things I command you so that you will love one another. John 4, 21 says, this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So love in the life of a believer is not optional. It's a commandment from God. It's a directive from God to choose love, to choose to be patient, to choose to be kind, to choose to bear all things, to choose uh, to be unselfish, to choose to live this way. That's what love is. That's what he is commanding. There's authority behind that command, too, because of who he is and what he's done. So how do we respond to him? How do we respond to his love? We love him, first and foremost. We love others. We serve others. We forgive others. That's how we love. That's how we live this holiday season. In every season of our lives, we make a decision to say, Lord, you are number one in my life. I recognize I would have no breath in my lungs, no ability to do anything apart from you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. I choose this day and every day of my life to live for you and to love you. And then we choose every day to love those around us. Husbands, we love our wives. We treat our wives with, 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 with dignity, with love, with, with, with tenderness. We love our kids well. We teach them, we raise them up in, in the things of God. We love those people in our lives that are hard to love sometimes. Sometimes it means we have to forgive. We choose to forgive. And this coworker really, really, oh, I'm so mad at them. And this person said this about me. They lied about me. They did this. They did, oh, Lord, I don't want to carry that around with me. I don't want to carry around that with this holiday season. I don't want to carry that around with me for the rest of my life. I'm choosing to let this go and say, Lord, you have forgiven me so much. So I choose to forgive those around me. I choose to be kind with my words. When that person cuts me off in the church parking lot to be one car ahead of me at the red light for 10 minutes. I love that person, Lord. I hope they have a great day. It's choosing to walk in and see that your kids have written all over the walls with a permanent marker. And instead of getting mad and blowing up, come on now. Say, man, you're so artistic. You're so creative. What a beautiful drawing. Come on, I'm going to teach you how to paint. We're going to paint this wall together. Love. Some of it, it may be more serious than that. You may have been deeply, deeply hurt. You may, may have been deeply, deeply offended. 
You may have been walking around with unforgiveness, with bitterness, with anger, with hatred for as long as you can remember. And I believe the Lord who loves us so much wants to help us to let go of those things today, to walk in his forgiveness, to walk in his love, and to take the weight of that off of our shoulders and to move forward. I want to take time today to respond to God's invitation to love. I want to ask the worship team to come forward. And as we do that today, I know this, I know that there are many different ways that we can respond to, to this invitation of God's love. The first is this, is that you may be here today, you may be watching online, and you may be struggling to love others, to walk in his love, because you haven't received his gift of love. You haven't chosen to, to, to receive. God is offering this gift of salvation, of love, of hope, of life, and you haven't yet received it. Maybe you hear me talk about this God of love, and you say, that, that's not the God that, that, that I've been told about. I've always heard that God was, was, was this or God was that, or, but the God that you're talking about, that sounds like a God of love, and that's who God is. God is holy, God is righteous, God is just, but God is love. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes. The very best way that we can respond to his love today, if you've never made this decision, is to respond to receive his love, to receive his forgiveness, and to say, today I choose to receive his gift of love and of forgiveness and of salvation, and I choose and make the decision to follow him this day. If you've never made the decision to commit your life to Jesus, to commit your life to following him, to loving him, to serving him from this day forward, and you wanna make that decision today, if you're here in person and say, I need to make this decision and I need to receive this gift of love, of freedom, of hope, of salvation. If that's you today, would you just raise your hand? If you're watching online, you can just send us a comment and we would love to reach out and pray with you as well. But if you're here in person, you need to make that decision today to follow Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you see whose hands were, were raised? You see those that were at home? Or you see those that are at home? There's somebody at home right now. That's Today is the day. Today is the day. Say, Lord, I choose you. That's you today, right there where you're at. Just say this prayer with me today. Say, thank you, Lord for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness. Lord, I know that I, I've sinned and fall short of your glory, but I know that Jesus died to pay the price for my sins because he loves me. I choose to receive his love. I choose to receive this gift of salvation and I choose to follow Jesus. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I make that confession with my mouth and I ask, oh God, that you would save me, rescue me, redeem me. I pray that I would be saved, healed, set free. Lord, that I, I would get plugged in and be discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving you, Lord, serving your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, for freedom. I thank you for hope, and I thank you for your love. Maybe you're here today, and when I begin to talk about unforgiveness, bitterness, maybe you're here today when I begin to talk about how, how we treat others, how we treat our kids, how we treat our spouse. 
When I talked about a coworker, you thought of a specific person. Maybe you struggle with, with anger and you're not even really sure why. But you say, I, I wanna love like God has loved me. Right there where you're at. Would you just begin to have that conversation with the Lord? Lord, I don't, I don't wanna carry this bitterness. I don't wanna carry this, this kind of attitude towards this person or that person. Lord, would you, would you fill me with your love so that I would love others the way that you have loved me? Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your kindness, for your patience, for your mercy. Lord, I pray for freedom in Jesus' name from anger, from hatred, from bitterness. I pray for peace and love hope and rest this holiday season and every every season of our lives, every situation, every circumstance. Lord, as we choose to follow you, that our lives would never be the same again, oh God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we choose this day to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want us to stand to our feet. We sing a song as we close this service. It says, if the only thing I see is your glory, then I've seen it all. If the only thing I hear is just one word from you, God, then I've heard it all. If I see your heart, oh God, but, but I don't ever receive another thing from you, Lord, you are all that I need. God, you are my everything. And this season, this when it's all about uh, getting this and getting that and all of the different things, are going, can we stop and just take time and say, God, I, out of everything else, Lord, you are what I need. And to be thankful, to continue to be thankful and say, what a God we serve. What a God he is. What a love he has. What, what an amazing thing that he has done. What an amazing God that he is. Let's sing this out with all that we are. Let's worship him today before we close this service. If the highest place I reach is at your feet, then I've done it all. If the best thing that I've seen is your glory, then I've seen it all. i
Can we just worship him? Thank you, Lord. What a God we serve. Amen. And my prayer as you leave this place in just a few minutes is that we would leave knowing that God so loved us. And we would carry that with us this season again and every day, every season of our lives. Amen. Amen. You can be seated for just one more moment. I want to invite our ministry teams to come forward. If you need prayer for anything, then when we dismiss in just a few minutes, instead of going out to the exit, you can come right up here to the front. One of these awesome men and women of God, mighty prayer warriors, would love the opportunity to pray with you and pray for you. So make sure that you stop by and you see them before you leave. I also wanted to just let you know this is the very last week that we have an opportunity to take a, a tag from the Operation Blessing Christmas tree. For those of you who may not know, we are partnering with Benavides Elementary to bless some of the families and the students from their school who might not otherwise be able to have Christmas presents this year. We're, we are blessed to be a blessing, so we're, we're partnering with them. And I'm so just excited. The very first week we had that tree out, y'all took almost all the tags that we had there already. Now we have more. So we put more out there. If you have it in your heart to do this, please make sure that you go and you see that today or you get on our website today and you, you, you get one of those tags so that you can participate in, in that opportunity. Uh, I also want to just remind you, next week, again, is Christmas Sweater Sunday, so wear your best or your worst Christmas sweater. Please don't try to guess what somebody is wearing. Don't assume they're wearing their worst when they felt like they were wearing their best. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> but come, wear, wear your Christmas sweater, whatever it is, worst or best. And let's have fun in the presence of God as we talk next week about the joy, the joy that comes with the birth of the Savior. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time with us, by the way, as we dismiss the service today, you can go right out here to our, our main driveway area, the main exit. There's a blue tent to the left-hand side. Uh, Pastor George Vasquez will be there who was doing the offering talk this morning. Uh, we'll have some volunteers there. And if you'll be patient with me, I'm going to do my best to get out there as quickly as possible. I would love to say hello to you and get to know you a little bit better as well. And we have a special gift that we want to give to you. So make sure you stop by and you see us over there on your way out because we would love to just shake your hand, say hi, and get to know you a little bit better. But man, what a great, great day it has been. Don't forget about Jingle Jam this Wednesday. Uh, bring, bring your kids, bring your families, bring the neighbor kids, bring whoever you can. It's going to be a great, great, great time. It's going to be a blessing. It today has been a blessing. We're blessed for one reason and one reason only. Why is that? To be a blessing. So go be blessed, be a blessing. Have a great week, and we'll see you right back here next Sunday for another service. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us during this incredible service. We hope that this message has been of encouragement to you. We would love to stay connected with you. If you need prayer, text PRAYER to 956-395-1551 so that we can pray with you. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you don't miss anything. Thank you for connecting with us and we hope to see you next Sunday.